I am a caricature artist, and I draw caricatures at live events all over Florida. And in this video, I'm going to take this photo, and I'm going to draw it in my studio and explain my live caricature drawing method as I go. And then I'm going to pull it into Procreate and see if I can take it to the next level, or maybe I just make it worse. Let's find out what happens. Okay, on this one, I'm looking at the photo and I'm trying to decide what is it about her that I want to emphasize in a caricature. I'm noticing that the top of the head is definitely the largest part. There's a definite triangle shape. She's got large cheekbones above a very small and thin chin. So that's my sketch. I'm basically just drawing the outline of the shapes that I see. Let's give this a shot. So another thing I'm noticing is that she has large eyes. So let's try to draw them large. And by large, I mean how they fit in her face. For example, a normal face, the eyes would be a little sh smaller. But her eyes take up a large amount of space here, so. I'm actually a little nervous because I did a quick sketch of this exact photo in pencil. And it actually came out really good, like the first attempt so I don't know if I just got lucky or if she's just easy to draw and so I'm kind of nervous that I can do it the second time when I'm working straight with ink okay so now for the eyebrow and I'm noticing that there's an angle from the corner of the eyebrow to the where her eyebrows I mean the eye tear duct to the corner of where the eyebrow starts. Then we got this sort of shape. The bridge of her nose goes up, almost touches her eyebrows, so we're just gonna start that line a little higher than normal. Then a big eye on the other side, although it's in three quarter view, so it's not gonna be as big as this eye. I'm not sure if I messed that up or not. <clears throat> Sometimes I draw something that I think is a mistake, but if I just keep drawing, then it starts to look better as everything comes together. Eyebrow on the other side. Okay, so <clears throat> she kind of has a long, thin nose compared to the average nose. And 
and I probably did not make that long enough. <clears throat> and the end of her nose kind of has a distinctive shape and her nostrils have a distinctive shape. They're kind of there and it curls around. divot, which I think it's called the philtrum. It's not deep, but it's definitely pronounced as a clear triangle. And we've got the lips, which are kind of small and thin. I'll give her a slight smile. <clears throat> chin starts there's a little dimension line there okay now we're switching to another marker <clears throat> and I'm trying a brand new type of marker I'll put the link in the description so this is not a Tombow this is a Sakura marker it's a double B for a large I don't know how this is gonna work but uh, in the test it worked pretty good. So here we go with the chin. Now the chin, like I said, is uh, it's thin and small. All right. Okay, now we're gonna get this line over here. She has large cheeks, large cheek bones. Sometimes I look on this uh, jawline, where does the, the break start? It starts this way and then it's gonna turn, but where is that and compared with the corner of the mouth? It's somewhere in this area. And I can even add a line here to show the dimension of the large cheek on this side. Okay, now the forehead line. There is a peak here at the hairline. I'm looking for the top of the ears on the photo and looking across, where does it line up with? It kind of lines up with this eyebrow so we've got to go up a little further and then the bottom one if I bring it look for the bottom and then bring it across it kind of lines up in this area Oops, definitely missed that. She's got these ribbons of hair. somewhere underneath the ear but it's a skinny neck 
I hope I haven't gone off the camera. So that is my quick sketch of this actress, Tilda Swinton. I think her real name is Catherine Matilda Swinton. I've seen her in a lot of movies. She has a distinctive face that you can't forget. So let me know what you think. Okay, so now I've got this thing in Procreate, and the first thing I do is flip it. Because I want to check and see if the perspective is off. I flip it back, then I lower the opacity. I go to a layer above it, I choose a new color, and I start sketching. And what I'm looking for here is taking it to the next level. So her cheeks are big, so I'm drawing her cheeks bigger. Her hair is high above her head, so I'm pushing it much higher. Her chin is thin, so I made it thinner. And I'm sketching over it and trying to improve every detail a little bit, looking for those little differences that I can push. I made her nose a little longer right here. The mouth a little smaller, a thinner chin. Now I'm going to flip it one more time just to be sure that nothing is off. I'll flip it back and forth a couple of times. And now I think I'm ready to start drawing the lines. Okay, now I'm putting in the lines, and this is really the fun part. I'm just working the lines piece by piece, making sure each one is kind of tapered, thick and thin on the ends. And I'm also looking for straights and curves to put in the lines. I don't always have to stick exactly with the sketch, but I can continue to improve it even as I'm putting the black lines in. I thought about drawing Tilda Swinton after I just rewatched the movie The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie, but it's really good. And it's based on the book by C.S. Lewis. And she played the evil queen in that movie. And man, she did a really good job. She definitely embodied an evil queen. And so I couldn't wait to draw her. Right here, I kind of added more detail to the nose than I usually do. And I'm getting that thin chin in there and those large cheeks. And I have to say, the hair was definitely my favorite part to draw on this particular drawing. Because it's like these large ribbons of hair that go up and over and then kind of curl out a little bit. And so what I did was I drew several thick ribbons of hair spaced apart from each other. And then between them, a base of hair that's going underneath those ribbons. And then I added hair flow lines to cause it to all blend together. And then because this particular photo is in black and white, I decided to do the drawing in black and white. So what I'm doing here is I am just filling in the whole space of her hair and her face with a just slightish gray tone. Then I'm going to a layer above that, making it a clipping mask setting it to multiply, and then drawing in the shadows. And I ended up using 
two or three different shadow layers for different levels of shadow. And then I went back and blended it in. And I want to ask you a question. Do you guys use Procreate or some other type of drawing program? And have you ever taken your sketches on paper and pulled it into your drawing program and tried to improve it? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. At this point in the process, I created a layer above the shadow layers. I set it to screen, and then I started adding in the highlights. I was using a white color, and I'm just looking for any place on the photo where there's a highlight, and then adding it to my drawing. And then I went back and blended it a little. So this is my final result. Let me know what you think. And thanks, and I'll see you on the next video.